The story of The Last of Us presents a terrifying alternate reality for humanity where an outbreak of a mutated parasitic fungus has decimated the human race and turned the infected into hyper-aggressive creatures. But the true horror of this premise comes from the real-world science it is based on. In this video, I'd like to discuss the very real Cordyceps fungi and how the creators of this post-apocalyptic scenario strove to incorporate real science as they tell the story of a civilization afflicted with its horrors. The inspiration for the setting of The Last of Us video game was found in nature. Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is commonly known as the zombie ant fungus. Upon infiltration of an ant, the fungus spreads throughout the insect's body, replacing the tissue of its host. The term zombie is used to describe this process as the fungus eventually assumes control of the ant's body and mind, influencing its very behavior. The fungus impels the ant to leave its nest and ascend to a spot with suitable temperature and humidity for fungal growth. The ant then locks itself into a secure position upon a leaf or stem with its mandibles where it will remain until its death, as the fungus completes its life cycle. The process leading to mortality takes 4 to 10 days. Meanwhile, the fungus continues to spread, draining the ant of its nutrients and upon entering its reproductive stage, the fruiting body of the cordyceps erupts from the ant's head, which then ruptures, releasing aerial spores to infect more unsuspecting victims. The creative director for The Last of Us video game, Neil Druckmann, was inspired by BBC's Planet Earth documentary series and their coverage of this bone-chilling event. As explained by narrator David Attenborough, it's not just ants that fall victim to cordyceps fungi. There are thousands of different types, with each preying upon a specific species. This detail in particular made Druckmann wonder about the possibility of human infection. The documentary goes on to explain the important role of the cordyceps fungi when it comes to maintaining the jungle's diversity, as parasites like these prevent any one group of animal or insect from gaining the upper hand. This fact also inspired the game's developers, with Druckmann saying, quote, It was all based on the idea that the more numerous a species becomes, the more likely it is to be preyed upon by this fungus. Druckmann and Naughty Dog game director Bruce Straley came to the conclusion that a story based on real-world science would make a more compelling game. After spending time researching cordyceps and other parasites, Druckmann stated that nature is way scarier than anything we could imagine, and that some of the best horror stories always talk about a fate worse than death. When contemplating what an ant goes through when being ravaged by the cordyceps and its ability to wipe out whole colonies, it is frightening to consider what could happen if humans were to fall prey to this virulent organism. In The Last of Us video game, a mutated strain of the cordyceps fungus began to spread in the year 2013. This particular parasitic fungus originated in South America and started to infect humans through contaminated crops. Proving to be just as dangerous for humanity as is seen in insects, in a matter of months, 60% of the population was either killed or infected by the fungus. Like its real-world inspiration, the mutated cordyceps grow while its human host is still alive. Symptoms normally occur within two days. There are four stages of the cordyceps brain infection. During stage one, infected humans behave with increased irritability and hostility toward others. As the host loses its higher brain function, they become incapable of rational thought, losing all of what made them who they are, what made them human. Outwardly, their hair begins to fall out and their skin becomes pale and covered with lesions. Humans in this early stage came to be referred to as runners due to their speed and tendency to swarm and attack in packs. As the fungus targets the brain first, the surrounding tissue is also quickly affected by the cordyceps. As such, runners have poor eyesight, yet the fact that they are still able to see, coupled with their aggressive speed and agility, makes them formidable weapons with which to spread the infection. Within two weeks, the host enters stage two, marked by even greater vision loss as the fungal growth of the head continues to expand. In this stage, the infected are referred to as stalkers. 
The hosts also begin to exhibit increased strength and emit croaking noises, which appears to be the early development of echolocation. After the start of infection, it can take anywhere between two weeks and a year to reach the stalker stage. After roughly a year of prolonged exposure to the fungus, the infected host enters stage 3. At this point, the infected are called clickers and are stronger and more aggressive, but their most striking characteristic is the massive and colorful fungal growth that has all but erased the face of its human host. The fungal protrusions from their infected brains have become so severe, there is generally only a maw full of jagged teeth left visible. Having lost their eyesight entirely, the infected rely fully on echolocation to compensate. Only in very rare cases does a host reach stage 4. If an infected individual lives longer than a decade, by this time, hardened fungal plates will have developed over most of their body. This advanced stage is marked by a host's intense strength and imposing size, as well as the tough fungal growth they are encased in, acting essentially as armored plating. Though they are extremely aggressive, they are also slow and uncoordinated at this point. Finally, when the cordyceps life cycle runs its course and kills its host, stalk-like fungal projections erupt from its body, which release more infectious spores. Spores released from a dead host's body, as well as a bite from the living infected, can spread this horrifying affliction. In HBO's TV series adaptation, it is implied that global warming could be the cause for the mutations in cordyceps fungi, as they adapted and consequently could withstand the higher internal temperatures of human hosts. As depicted in the series, this nightmare scenario became reality in the year 2003, when workers at a flour and grain factory in Jakarta, Indonesia, became infected by the mutated cordyceps and began exhibiting violent behavior. By that point, the contaminated grain, which served as a perfect substrate for the cordyceps, was then distributed around the globe, attacking its new, optimal host species. In reality, most of the 600 species of cordyceps are from Asia, so this slight change from the video game is understandable, as it adds that extra dose of realism. In addition, Jakarta, Indonesia is home to the largest flour mill in the world, making the mutated cordyceps origin and the speed of its distribution around the globe that much more of a realistic and frightening prospect. When it comes to the cordyceps brain infection as presented in the TV series adaptation, there is one significant change to how the deadly fungus spreads. In the original game, a human could become infected by either ingesting the cordyceps fungi, as in its initial outbreak, transmitted through a bite from an infected human, or from inhaling spores released in the air from the dead body of an infected host. In the game, the surviving populace would have to wear gas masks in certain areas to avoid becoming infected by the deadly spores. For the series adaptation, the show's creators decided to eliminate the need for these masks altogether. Though spores may enter the series at a later point, they are no longer one of the primary means for the fungus to spread. In addressing the reasons behind this change, executive producer Craig Mazin said, quote, In the world that we're creating, if we put spores in the air, it would be pretty clear that they would spread around everywhere, and everybody would have to wear a mask all the time, and probably everybody would be completely infected by that point. So we challenged ourselves to come up with an interesting new way for the fungus to spread. This led to the development of cordyceps tendrils for the TV series, which spread among its infected hosts. These fungal threads essentially create a hive mind for the parasitic fungus that are unified against humanity with the innate instinct to infect and expand. With this change, a bite from an infected host isn't necessarily required to infect someone, as the tendrils merely need to pass through from one host to another. In the series, a corresponding underground network of tendrils grows, as the mutated cordyceps infect more of the population. As explained in the show, one could inadvertently step on a patch of cordyceps in one place and awaken a dozen infected individuals from somewhere else. This network of tendrils is based on the fungal threads found in nature called mycelium, which once again roots this nightmarish universe in real science. 
The continued efforts by the creators of The Last of Us franchise to ground its fiction in as much realism as possible is what makes the story such a terrifying concept. Science fiction is often at its most fascinating and frightening when the premise or aspects of a story contain seeds of real-world scientific concepts, theories, and facts. This thought-provoking realism can drive science fiction further into the realm of philosophy and makes these horrifying scenarios all the more palpable. But I'm curious to know what you think of the cordyceps fungus. Are there aspects of this infection whether in the game or in reality that stand out to you? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe for more sci-fi and fantasy news and lore. Thank you all so much for your support and as always, have a very nerdy day.